Hey everyone, welcome back to JavaScript in Metaphors. Today's topic is going to be data types. And last time we looked at data in general and how we kind of used it in our chat application to create something tangible and have the application being driven by data. So now it's time to dive in a little bit deeper and look at the different basic data types in the JavaScript language. So we just talked about data in the last lesson. And I want to continue a little bit in this lesson and talk about data types in the JavaScript language. Because um, I think it'll going is going to give us a good foundation. And it's also going to help uh, with the exercise that is going to come at the end of this lesson. So let's go ahead and talk data types. And I want to start here, and we're going to do a little bit of mocking in this uh, file here. But before we do, let's talk about the different data types we have. So in JavaScript, we have something called primitive values. And those are strings. I'm going to write them up here. Let's go ahead and strings. And we have numbers. We have come something called null, we have something called undefined. Go ahead and keep it lowercase undefined. And we have boolean and something called symbol. So those are the basic primitive types that we have. And it's not that many, but they're all important. They serve different functions. So let's start at the top and work our way down. So strings are basically text. So this is a string right here. It's uh, usually surrounded by double quotes or single quotes. And it's basically an immutable value. So if you define a string, you can't change the same string. You can add to it, uh, manipulate it, and create a new string, but it'll have a different uh, location in memory. So it doesn't have any practical meaning right now. Uh, just know that a string is basically a lot of text string together. That's why it's called string, because you're stringing together different characters here. All right, so then we have numbers. Um, numbers. They're good to perform mathematical calculations. Obviously, you can do 10 plus 10, uh, 200 divided by 10. Um, and they're useful for all sorts of operations where you need math to kind of calculate something. So numbers are really good for that. Um, you have something called Boolean, which is basically just saying true or false. Those are both Boolean values. Um, Boolean values are good to decide when you want something to happen or not. So we're going to go into it later, but we have something called um, control flow, which is basically just a fancy word of saying um, what that describes what's happening in your program. Um, and you control what's happening in your program with control flow. So basically, you're saying, if this is true, do this. If this is true, do something else. So it's basically just, uh, you can think of it as a crossroads. So whenever you get to a crossroads, you have two or three paths or more that you can take, and you have to choose one of them. And Boolean values help you decide which road to take. So imagine you go to a crossroads and there's a um, post sign there and it has an arrow towards each of the four roads. Three of the arrows says false. One of the arrows says true. That means you'll go on the road where the arrow that says true points to. And it's basically the same thing. It works in, in JavaScript. We can kind of define these crossroads and uh, use Boolean values to decide which path to take. All right, so that covers Booleans. And then we have something called null. And null is basically saying that, 
wait, there is no value. So basically it's a value or no value. And I know that doesn't really make sense, but um, there are times where you want to set a value to null because you might not want to use that value anymore. Uh, you might want the garbage collector, which we'll get into later uh, to collect it. Uh, you might want to make sure that you're removing something so it does have a use um, and null is basically the absence of a value. It's used to set an absence of a value. Um, let's go ahead and talk about undefined. So undefined and null are quite similar, but undefined reflects um, or it, it's used to define a value that hasn't been declared. Uh, so, um, that hasn't been set, apologies. So you can, uh, for example, create a variable. We'll get into that later too, like this. And this variable will have the initial value of undefined because we didn't assign a value to it. So right now it's going to be undefined. If we did this and said that the variable hello equals 10, then it wouldn't be undefined anymore. It would be 10. So undefined is used to denote the, or to indicate that something hasn't been set. All right, and uh, we also have symbol, which is a new value in JavaScript that represents a unique and immutable value. We're going to skip over it a little bit for now uh, and focus on the ones that we talked about here. Um, and we'll get back to symbol at a later date. But for now, let's just think about this in terms of what we have here in our data set. And you can see that our data set is mostly strings. Uh, so our name here for a user is a string, and our ID is also a string. Um, if we go down to our messages here, you can see that we were still employing strings um, fairly um, a lot here, but we're also using a number to indicate the timestamp uh, of the message. So you can see that we aren't using a lot of uh, data types, but then again, there aren't that many data types to work with. So it makes it a little bit easier. But I think now, uh, hopefully, you have a rudimentary understanding of what data types is. And um, let's go ahead and create an exercise um, out of this. So I want you to take a look at this um, sidebar right here. And you have the... Um, let's say the, the answers in hand here, but we're going to go through it. And then uh, I want you to go out on your own and take a look at defining a data structure for, for another website. So let's see this sidebar here. We have the name here. Well, that's obviously a string uh, because we have the kind of characters string together so we can kind of use, it wouldn't make sense for this to be a number, right? It's a string. And so is the content here content of the message is also a string. Now, this looks like a string. But if you remember, our message had a timestamp that was a number. So if we think back to the last video, where we said that we can use JavaScript to kind of manipulate and change data. What's done here is we've taken the timestamp, which is a number, and we've used JavaScript to manipulate it into being a string. So this is a string, but it was a number because you can't kind of use a string to keep time. Um, you have to use a number for that. And so you need to transform from one to the other. So that's an example of using JavaScript to kind of 
massage the data into something new and using it in a way that makes sense in this context. So uh, this here, this image, it has a source, um, which is kind of the path to where this image is located. And that is also a string, as you can see from um, the image URL here. So now I want you to go to twitter.com and I want you to take a look at the explore section here. And I want to take the first five tweets that come up in this section. And I want you to try to create a data structure for it. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this first one. Uh, we have different um, data structures here. Uh, we have some favorites here. We have some retweets. We have some comments and we have some content up here and we have an image. So try to write down what you think each of these um, data pieces would look like. What kind of data types would they be? All right. So once you've done that, then let's uh, look at it together in the next video.